Hi, in this video we are going to see how to send the JBPM audit data to an external database. Oftentimes there might be a requirement to send uh, the audit information to a totally different database which is a database which is different from uh, the one which stores the process instance information. So JBPM 7 provides an option to send the audit data to an external database using a few set of configurations. Uh, let's see how to do that. First, you need to choose the external database to which the audit data of a specific set of process instances that belongs to a project needs to be sent. So in this case, for instance, uh, I'm choosing uh, MySQL as the, as the database to which the audit data needs to be sent. So um, you can see here in this uh, GitHub uh, project, the, the key group JBPM project, we have uh, a number of uh, different DDL scripts which are provided for each of the databases. And uh, since the example is going to be based on MySQL, so I'm choosing MySQL uh, as the database and you can see the JBPM schema for the uh, MySQL database. And uh, over here, actually there are four key tables uh, which are uh, which are the ones which are going to store the audit data. Uh, they are the BPM task summary uh, table and the node instance log table and the process instance log table and variable instance log table. So these are the four different tables uh, the database tables which actually store uh, the audit information of uh, of the process instances so uh, first you choose the external database uh, so in this case as i had mentioned uh, i have created an external uh, database uh, instance uh, on mysql and the database is named as uh, JBPM audit so let's see what are all the databases that are available show database yeah and this is the name of the database and let's see what are all the tables uh, that are there in this database JBPM audit and then show tables so as I had mentioned these are the four tables that are going to store the uh, audit data of uh, the process instances so using the scripts that I had shown here which is available in this github link uh, I have created the these four tables in the MySQL database which is called JBPM audit and once the database and the tables uh, that are required for the audit are created the next step is to create a data source connectivity uh, to this particular database in the underlying application server. So again, in this example, we have Wildfly uh, application server and you just need to go to the configuration, subsystems, data sources, XA data source, XA type of uh, data source and and here we go, we have the XA data source which is called audit DS. So this is the uh, data source that I created and this one points to the uh, to the database that uh, we have uh, in MySQL for audit data which is called JBPM audit. Uh, so nothing specific mm, about this data source except for the fact that it has to be a XA data source. Once this data source is created then the next step is to create a persistence.xml which is going to contain the, the data source information which needs to be used in order to persist the audit information to the external database. So we have the exactly the same name of the uh, data source, the GNDI name that we have uh, provided here. Uh, for example, we have the GNDI name. So the same name is uh, specified here in the process in the persistence.xml and also the four important tables uh, which are going to be used by JPA in order to persist the audit data. So those uh, 
classes corresponding to that also needs to be mentioned in this persistence.xml and finally the the dialect that needs to be used uh, in order to connect to the database this needs to be mentioned so once this persistence.xml uh, is created uh, this xml file needs to be placed into the key server war so if you go to your app servers deployment folder and the war file where we have the key server war open up the key server war and we will have uh, the location for called meta inf and within the meta inf the persistence.xml needs to be placed the one that we created just now and once this is done then the next step is to go back to the project in the key workbench and specify the specific persistence unit that we have uh, uh, mentioned in the persistence.xml so we have the persistence.xml we have mentioned the persistence unit name as audit pu that is the name that we need to provide here and besides that we also need to make some changes uh, to the way the event listeners are going to use this persistence unit so let's go to the event listeners tab and here we need to add a new event listener uh, which is going to point to JB, uh, JPA working memory DB logger and um, this event listener is going to use that particular audit PU that we created the persistent unit that we had mentioned in the persistence.xml so we need to uh, specify that PU here and besides that we also need to specify the task event listener that needs to be used by this project so we need to specify um, the BAM task event listener and we need to specify the persistence unit that is that is going to be used by this BAM task event listener and that's it once this is done so we save the project and deploy it once the deployment is done let's go to the process definitions uh, page and we'll create a process instance based upon this particular project so we start it we submit it so and we can see that the process instance is started and now we can go to the database and see if the audit data related to this particular process instance has been logged into the external audit database okay so let's check first in the process instance log and there we go so we have the process instance with the process instance ID number two for this process which is called task extra audit DS and that was created at this particular timestamp which matches with yeah just a few seconds back uh, from the current timestamp and similarly we can also check the other tables especially the BAM task summary now that we have a human task in there yeah so we have we can see again that a human task has been created in the for that particular process instance so going back to the diagram we can see that there is a human task that has got created and this entry corresponds to that which has got created and also we can see the node instance log to see what are all the nodes that uh, um, through which the control flow has passed for that particular process instance so we have the process instance 2 and it has passed through the start node and the human task node and that corresponds exactly to the to the state of the process instance as we can see from the uh, key workbench okay so this concludes this video